Las series policíacas es algo que a muchos les gusta, e incluso que han estado en muchos videojuegos. Títulos me vienen varios. Claro, no todos serán buenos ni tampoco tratarán de lo mismo. Casi siempre lo normal es de detener al culpable o al ladrón. Pero si hay algo en lo que les gusta mucho de estas series es los asesinos seriales o asesino en serie, que son individuos que en un lapso de menos de 30 días o incluso una semana, acaban con la vida de múltiples personas. Estos tienen diferentes motivos, algunos emociones fuertes, algunos gratificación, bueno, ya saben, carnal, otros ganancias financieras o busca atención. Suelen seguir una misma metodología o también conocido como modus operandi, involucrando a sus víctimas a menudo que comparten características con el agresor, ya sea la ocupación, origen étnico, apariencia, sexo, edad, ya saben, cosas por el estilo. De estos me viene a la mente el asesino del Zodíaco, Ted Bundy, el Jeffrey Dahmer, y que incluso apenas aquí en México tuvimos un pequeño de Jeffrey Dahmer, toda una fichita, y créame, ese era curiosamente, era un progre en toda regla. Vegano, no sé qué tantas cosas, hasta actor por alguna razón. Esto me hizo acordar de un título muy especial que vino hace muchos años y ese es... Condiment Criminal Origins. Es un videojuego de suspenso psicológico en primera persona con elementos de acción y terror de supervivencia. Entornos altamente atmosféricos y perturbadores con un combate brutalmente visceral que nos llegó para la Xbox 360 y la PC. El juego cuenta la historia de Ethan Thomas, un agente de la unidad de delitos en serie del FBI. Posee la capacidad de sentir las acciones de un asesino en la ciudad ficticia de Metro, que ha tenido un aumento tanto en los asesinatos en serie como de las agresiones perpetuadas por los vagos locales y delincuentes. Thomas está convencido de que ambos están conectados. El juego está influenciado obviamente por películas, series, novelas, casos reales, por ejemplo, en películas creo que se parece mucho al Silencio de los Corderos y 7. Una película de 1995, véanla, esa es muy buena. Y bueno, debido a eso, y obviamente por, también por casos reales. Ahora, ¿de qué va la historia? La historia comienza con el agente Ethan Thomas, un agente de la unidad de crímenes en serie, que es enviado a investigar un asesinato acompañado de un viejo agente. Esto ocurre en una serie de condominios, de un barrio pobre donde las drogas y los crímenes van de la mano, en una sociedad cada vez más enferma. Al llegar a la escena del crimen, encuentran el cuerpo sin vida de la víctima, y por azares del destino, el criminal se encuentra en la escena. El detective, tu compañero, se percata y lo persigue. Cuando Ethan lo encuentra, el asesino lo ataca. En ese preciso momento llega el detective, el asesino, el cual lo mata con un arma de Ethan, por lo cual, es acusado de forma injusta por los asesinatos de sus compañeros, así que se ve obligado a escapar de la justicia y en dicho escape encuentra un compañero un tanto con unas tintes muy oscuros, el cual lo ayuda a lo largo de la aventura con tal de encontrar el verdadero asesino y así limpiar su nombre. Thomas, I don't got all day here. Let's get a move on. People are scared. We need to get this one. Follow me. Bodies this way. Ugh, I'm getting too old for this. You gotta crouch to get under the tape. Come on, let's go. Body's rotten as we speak. The patrolman on duty said there was a mannequin involved, just like the matchmaker. Old damn city's crawling with sick killers. God, and why do they always have to kill in such maggot-infested dumps? Why can't they pick a nice spot without addicts and gang members for once? Some place not so damn dark. Jesus, H. Nearly shot the bastard. 
Come on, this place is creeping me out. Your stupid car broke my light. Better turn yours on. I hear you're afraid of the dark. 114, 114, report in. Have the feds arrived? Becker here. FBI on the scene. Over and out. Copy that. Agent Thomas, this is Officer Becker. Becker found the body on patrol. Agent? Thomas. Hello, Thomas. This is Lieutenant Rosa. I'm your lab tech again on this one. Our wireless data transfer system enables you to investigate and collect evidence at the scene of the crime, and transmit it to me for analysis. When I have results, I'll contact you via your cell phone. All right, let's get to work. Let's start by determining the cause of death. When your instincts tell you evidence is nearby, prepare a forensic tool. The system will select the correct tool for you, so don't worry about that. That's it. The same mark. Exact same M.O. as the others? It's the work of a guy we've been calling the Matchmaker. Kills young women violently, poses them in grisly tableau with male department store mannequins. Mannequin always slightly disfigured by a mark on the face. Hmm. Any luck on the mug book searches? I bet the killer has the same mark. No luck so far. Becker, no smoking at a crime scene. I don't smoke. Well, someone was. Ugh. It's coming from in here. Dang it. I can smell the cigarette smoke. He's right above us! Call for backup now! This is Officer Becker. We need backup immediately. Fourth and start. Potential homicide suspects still in building. Officers are on their way. ETA, ten minutes. Copy that. Becker and I will head up the fire escape. You wait here for backup. Shit! Okay, now he's playing with us. Change of plans. Becker, secure that door. Thomas, check out the building and get these lights back on. All clear, Agent. Sooner we finish up here, the better. Let's go! Oh, and for Christ's sake, be careful. this end of the gun. But listen, you bastard. Don't mess this up for us. We are both on the same path of righteousness. Thomas! <coughs> and the path takes strange Freeze, turns. Police! Police! Drop the weapon now! Be ready for death, Agent Thomas. It shall come visiting again.
Hello, Ethan. Uh, who are you? What is going on? Calm yourself. My name is Malcolm Van Horn. I was a great friend of your father's. Yes, I remember you. A long time ago, but why are you here now? Last night? Well, I was nearby. An unfortunate scene. You did your best, but it could not be helped. The detectives? They're dead. Shot with your weapon, and you will be blamed for their deaths. Ridiculous. I'll just tell them- What? Tell them the truth? They have already decided the truth. This is insane. I can't just give up the Bureau. It's already been taken from you. Now join me and help yourself. Open up. It's the police. Take your bag and head across to the metro station. I will meet you later. Agent Thomas, you know you're in there. Open up now. Ethan, you must trust me. I am here to help. Now go! Thomas speaking. Ethan, it's Van Horn. How do you know this number anyway? I know many things about you, Ethan. Since your father's death, I've watched you, hoping that you would find your potential. My potential? Yes. You've become an excellent investigator. Not through training or luck, but instinctually. However, you'll find that you are capable of seeing so much more. Again with the instincts. They're a gift from... Well, perhaps not from God. Remember, they can help you and others. Again, I must go. Be careful.
Makes sense the matchmaker would be there, a good source of mannequin parts. But then what's all this here? An outpost? A, a second shop? <sighs> I should probably go down there. Yeah, just don't get carried away. Shit, the cops don't even drive down Burnside unless they have to. It's a nasty area filled with nasty people. And the people down there are different. They go beyond nasty. Stand clear of the platform. Stand clear of the platform. Metro Station Daily Rods are now beginning for Tuesday. Route 6 to 12th Avenue. Route 9 to Montgomery. Route 16 to Burnside. Arriving platform 16. Do not hold train doors. Thomas, Route 16 to Burnside. That train will take you directly to the department store. If I hurry, I'll just make it. Yeah. Thomas, it's Farrell. Running from the Bureau will do no good. You know we'll find you eventually. Look, I understand. The case load became too much. You weren't solving cases like you used to. You're talented, high strung. You snapped. It happens sometimes. C Look, I did not snap. Someone else killed those policemen. I it looks like it might have been the matchmaker. With your gun? That seems unlikely, doesn't it? We have psychiatric staff that can help you sort things out. With all due respect, I don't need a shrink. <sighs> Maybe I have gone crazy. Look, Feral. Yes. To be expected. They're not going to let this drop. You must continue with your investigation. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. I mean, no. What do you want from me, Malcolm? What's going on? Going on? You're being investigated by the FBI for the murder of two police officers. That's what's going on. You will be tested, Thomas. Of that you can be sure. I must go. Image received. Well, what do we have here? A matchmaker scene. But it's not quite right. Looks like you have a male corpse and a female mannequin. Exactly the opposite of normal. Well, not normal. Thomas, photograph the victim's face. mark is consistent with the painted marks on all the male mannequins in previous matchmaker crime scenes, but this is strange. Thomas, get a shot of his right hand, will you? Yes, yes, he's missing his right index finger, and it doesn't look like it's a recent loss either. This guy's the matchmaker. Well, he certainly didn't kill himself and set it up this way. See what else you can find. Damn, no usable DNA traces. Killer must have worn gloves, but there is something. What is it? I think I've got something, Thomas. The newspaper clippings you found in the room at the metro station, each of the articles talks about a serial killer. A serial killer that was on your case list. Nine names were mentioned. Of those, seven of the nine were crossed out in each of the clippings by a black felt tip marker. The only names that weren't crossed out were the matchmaker and the torturer. Of the names that were crossed out, all those cases have gone cold. And now you can cross off the matchmaker. Wait, are you implying that there's someone stalking serial killers? So what, he goes around killing killers and then he marks off their name in his little personal diary? It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It does, but it adds up. It almost makes sense. Hold on. Ah, oh, shit. Rosa, I have to call you back. Yeah. You were going to call me back. Sorry. So, the fingerprint in the metro station and the boot print are not the matchmakers, but this other guy. So, is he the torturer? Doubtful. It's not the torturer's M.O. Think about it. The 
final murder in each of those cases on your list ended with a killing similar to the previous ones. This guy goes around and kills the killers in the same way that they're killing the innocent. He's like an uber killer, a serial killer X, a perp not on your original case list. So this serial killer X kills serial killers. He takes them down using their own methods. If the torturer is still at large, what's his MO? Pretty sick stuff. He likes to abduct people, torture them for fun, then let them loose and hunt them down. His goal is to drive them to suicide so he doesn't actually deliver the final blow. What is this city coming to? All right, so I've got to find the torturer and save his ass so the new killer doesn't kill him? Yeah, well, I'm no longer an agent, apparently. Sorry. Look, I can't get you the Bureau dossier on the torturer now, as you can imagine. But we can find out some public information. And I have something else you need to see. Okay. Well, it's too dangerous for me to come to the Bureau. Can you meet me at the city library? You know there's been a fire there. The whole thing's shut down for repairs. Exactly. There's damage, but there's got to be a terminal or two still working. And no one will know. Uh, can you meet me there in uh, 15 minutes? I'll be there. <sighs> Shit. What the hell was that? Thomas, I'm at the library. Where are you? Rosa, be quiet. Hey, Smithy. Johnson, wait up. Rosa, are you still there? Very few people can tell me to shut up and get away with it. Sorry, I'll be there in a couple minutes. Hurry. I have a feeling I'm not alone here. Over here. This might not have been a good idea. Squatters and addicts have moved in, and they don't like company. Come this way. I have something to show you. I used my security clearance to do a little checking up on you. I found this folder in your supplemental personnel file. During your last physical, they found several abnormalities. For starters, your bone and muscle densities are off the chart. You have a reputation for being tough, but who knew? You also have a hyperactive serotonergic system in the brain. What that means, I have no idea. And lastly, there's a chest x-ray that's been redacted. Redacted? Yeah, right where your esophagus and larynx are. Someone's blacked out the x-ray and added the notation, C subjects PR-56. A PR-56 is a special addendum to a personnel record and yours is classified black. That's pretty top-level security, way beyond either you or me. Our government is awfully interested in you. I didn't know. Well, now you do. Maybe I shouldn't have told you, but there it is. Oh, and I also left something there on the counter for you. Popular modification to the standard taser. Thomas, you okay? You looked like you were about to faint there. Come on, let's get this over with. Scavengers looking for parts to sell, or just maniacs destroying things. We have to find a terminal that isn't damaged. <coughs> it's a search engine specific to the library. Just type in the torturer's name, and we should get the latest info from the local news, including broadcast feeds. Damn it. Can anything else go wrong? 
We'll have to find the server room and get the network back. Rosa! Rosa! Are you there? Back off, you bastard! Come any closer and I'll rip your head off! Rosa, it's me, Thomas. Oh. Oh, he, he must have clobbered me in the back of the head before taking off. Are you okay? There, there were these, these shadowy things standing over you. What? Look, while you're chasing shadows, that jerk tried to kill me. I bit him good, though, right on the hand. Did you get any of the blood sampled? I saw some hit the floor. Yes. Sampled and transferred back to the lab. Excellent. I can patch in through this computer and do a remote analysis. Bingo. DNA from the sample matches DNA taken from the metro station hideout. This is the guy. This is our serial killer X. He killed the policeman, and he's been killing all of the other guys on your case list. What did he want with you? He wanted to know what we knew about the torturer. He made me look it up on the net. He knows the whole M.O. now. The abduction, torture, suicide thing. Thomas, the torturer is on your case list, and he's the only one whose trail hasn't gone cold since we ran into this serial killer X. X wants the torturer to die. He's hunting him down. Take a look at this. This is Jennifer Alden reporting from police headquarters. Developments in the case of the torturer serial killer. A retired gym teacher from the city's juvenile rehabilitation program has informed police of contact he had almost eight years ago with a troubled youth named Carl Anderson, who reported fantasies that match the torturer's methods exactly. Authorities are now asking the public to inform police if they know of Carl Anderson's whereabouts. Do not approach the suspect, as he should be considered armed and dangerous. Sources within the police department are telling me they are also concerned because their informant can no longer be located. Department spokespersons have refused comment on this latest development. This is Jennifer Alban, reporting for News Channel 5. Carl Anderson. Hmm. The gym teacher tells the cops on you, and now the teacher can't be found. Okay, Rosa, we have to find the school where this teacher worked. School and city district records are in the basement. Follow me. Hopefully, this key will get us where we need to go. Okay, eight years ago would put the kid and the teacher at the same school in 1997. Here it is. Anderson Carl. There's a lot of Carl Andersons, but I bet this is our guy. He was enrolled or sentenced to an educational rehabilitation center for the severely troubled. St. Joseph's Secondary on Northeast 52nd and Fremont. It's been closed for five years, and no wonder. That's one of the worst parts of town. Christ, the cops have just been letting it go to hell for years. And yeah, what about the faculty? It doesn't list occupations, just a list of names. I'll take it back to the lab and see what I can find. It's him. He's been listening to us. It looks like we've attracted other unwanted attention. What about our serial killer X? He's got the same information we do, so that means he's also going to go to the school. Perhaps I can catch two killers with one net. I'll drive you there, then head back to HQ and work on that faculty list. Thomas, it's Malcolm. How are you doing? Is the investigation going well? It's going as well as it can be. Wait, what are you doing here? How did you know where to find me? Oh, just a coincidence. Saw you from across the street. Coincidence? I don't know what your game is here, Van Horn, but I've got a job to do, if you'll excuse me. Transfer complete. It's Tibbetts. 
Fingerprints from his personnel file match the hand. It looks like the torturer got to him before we did. Thomas speaking. Thomas, I just wanted to make sure you met me out front when we were done. I didn't want to interfere with the investigation, but... <laughs> Help is on the way. Who did this to you? Carl Anderson. The torturer. Okay, take it easy. Do you know where he is now? Other man came to Carl away. Left me here to die. Rosa, send an EMT immediately. <sighs> Cancel it. <laughs> Similar to the pesticide we found on the matchmaker's neck? An exact match. I've been running an analysis on those samples. It's azenfos methyl and is class 1, highly toxic. Was previously used as an insecticide for all sorts of agricultural crops, now banned for domestic use, and can only be used commercially by permission. This particular formulation includes some other trace chemicals and can be matched to a brand name called Applewell. I've put in a contact to the company to see if we can get a purchaser's list. Apple well. Apples. Yes, as I said, it was used on all sorts of agricultural crops. Apples would be one of those. Yeah, the town of Briar is pretty rural. Any chances there's an apple orchard up there? I'll get right on it. So why are you in on this? I have uh, a sense of responsibility. I needed to help. Help? You mean with my investigation? Yes, among other things. <laughs> there was a time I thought I was the best investigator the Bureau ever had. Now it seems they were interested in me for other reasons. What do you mean? I saw my file. 
Apparently I'm some sort of circus freak to them. Hmm. That may not be helpful. I wonder how much they know of what is happening. I would stay away from the Bureau as long as I could. It's not like I have much choice, since they still think I killed those two officers. Their deaths were unfortunate, but maybe it's best this way. Best? You seem to know a lot more about what's happening than you're letting on. This is Appleseed Orchard Estate. Stay on your toes. I'll drop you off at the house and head over to the barn. I'll meet up with you later. like serial killer X got to him, painted him up, tortured him, drove him to suicide, just like Anderson did to his victims. Our man must be near. Be careful. Your lab access is terminated as of now. Taxpayers wouldn't like you using resources when you're officially on suspension. Farrell, listen to me. Talk to Rosa. We're this close to getting the guy. I don't know what poor innocent schmuck you're chasing, but stop it now. Come into the Bureau. Give yourself up and we'll talk. There are things we need to discuss. I can't do it, Farrell. Then play it your way, but we'll find you. Count on it. Looks like you're on your own, Thomas. Carl? Carl? Come on, Mr. Torturer. Don't you want to know what it feels like? We're not even half done. Carl. You know how this will end. I was put on this earth to bring you to justice. Your fate is in my hands. Up. Wait for it. It's a shame. Wait for it. Now perhaps you know what you have put others through. Although it makes you even more pathetic that you weren't brave enough to kill yourself. Now I'll have to do the job and make it look right. So sad. Now! You shouldn't have come here. Please listen to me. I am here to help. You are not yourself. You are not in your right mind. Let me help you. I know of what I speak. I... Welcome to consciousness, my friend. Though you won't enjoy it long. <sighs> we were good in the beginning. But you turned out to be kind of a failure, didn't you? You still don't get it? I've been using you, Ethan Thomas. <laughs> I watched you, and followed you, and used you to find the serial killers you so desperately sought, and then killed them. Okay, I must admit, I was a bit dramatic. Killed them the same way they'd killed their own victims. <laughs> a bit of fun, you know. <laughs> I got good at it. Shame it ruined you at the Bureau. But some things are unavoidable. Of course, 
Since you're no longer going to be any help, there's no reason to go on this way. How would you prefer to die? I didn't like the torturer's methods much. Too risky. Perhaps a slit across the throat, like the roadside carver. Ah, short and sweet. Or maybe the bone cutter. Neatly dissected the body, removed the internal organs, and labeled them for the police to find. Oh, yes, he was one of mine, too. We were so close to him, but I got there first. <laughs> Perhaps it would be better if you lost a finger. Let's <laughs> make up. and destroy it. It has caused all this madness. Go, kill it, now! back, Anna. No, not to the Bureau, not to your old life. Thomas, you have looked into the face of hate, the visage of evil. Know that hate is in your soul, too. It is, sadly, everywhere. Mastering one's fear and controlling one's hatred is perhaps the most difficult thing one can do. Well, at least it's over. It's dead, and the killings will stop. Stop the car. No, no, you still don't understand. He's done unspeakable things, even though those he killed were killers themselves. But he isn't responsible. He's not in his right mind. He's... Stop the goddamn car now! Open the trunk. Thomas, don't! He was a good boy. We were all good people. We were able to fight it back, most of us. My nephew was not as strong. He fell victim and destroyed so many things. We fought to save him. I, I, I must continue to do so. I don't care whether the sick fuck is in his right mind or not. Think of what you are doing! Both of you have a chance for redemption. Redemption? Listen, old man, you used me just like he did. You you used me to save your precious nephew, a, a serial killer. You're, you're no better than he is.
You really know how to impress a lady, Thomas. Around here, people keep to themselves. Why the lay-low routine? I've been cleared of the murders, but my suspension has got me thinking. I guess I just... I don't know who to trust anymore. Yeah, tough break. Man, you look like crap. Yeah, I've been better. You said you found something interesting? Yes, very odd. A cult seems to be behind all this. We can tie them to the deaths of the serial killers investigated by your department. A cult? The man responsible was Leland Van Horn. Yes, I know. He manipulated both you and us. But where is he? We have no Leland Van Horn in custody. He... Uh, look, I explained all of this in my deposition to the Bureau. But a lot of unanswered questions remain, Thomas. Which brings me to why I'm here. Maybe we could make better sense of all this if a few more were found, but under the circumstances, you did well. <sighs> Anyway, the results suggest a group may be behind all this, and lots of other criminal activity around the city. Do you know anything about this? Who these people are? Are you affiliated with them in any way? Rosa, can I trust you? Of course you can trust me, Thomas. We've been through a lot together. Look, I have no idea what any of it means. Something weird, something unexplainable happened during my investigation, but truthfully, the questions you ask, I, I just, I can't answer. I'm sorry, Rosa. I'm sorry too, Thomas. I really am. Take care of yourself. Y eso sería toda la historia, simplemente oscuro y sorprendente. Ahora, para resumir de forma rápida, Ethan Thomas es un agente del FBI. Llega al lugar de un homicidio en un edificio abandonado, todo sale mal y es inculpado de la muerte de sus compañeros. Así que comienza una búsqueda del culpable para poder detenerlo y limpiar su nombre, pero se topa con sucesos que lo superan y misterios que ni él mismo siente que pueda resolver. Ahora vamos al gameplay. Este se divide principalmente en dos, combates e investigación de escenas del crimen. El combate del juego se basa principalmente en el cuerpo a cuerpo. Eso sí, antes de nada solo puedes portar un arma, no más. Y no me refiero a un arma de fuego y un arma de cuerpo a cuerpo, no. Deberás elegir constantemente qué arma llevar, ya que en algunos momentos, en algunos entornos piden algunas herramientas en específico que se pueden utilizar en combate, pero que también tienen una función alternativa. Por ejemplo, un hacha no solo te sirve para acabar con un enemigo, también puede derribar ciertas puertas. Una palanca puede abrir ciertas cajas fuertes, un mazo puede destruir ciertos candados y una pala puede cortar ciertos cables de circuitos. En cambio, cuando usas un arma de fuego, no puedes recolectar munición adicional, ya que las armas de fuego no se pueden recargar. Cada arma de fuego dura solo mientras haya balas en el cargador actual. Muy importante, la gran mayoría de las armas de fuego no tendrán el cargador lleno, sino que puede que traigan una bala, dos o tres, o que esté a la mitad del cargador, o casi completo, pero muy pocas veces las encontrarás con el cargador lleno. También, cuando se les acabe la munición, puedes utilizar la culata de cualquier arma de fuego, como arma cuerpo a cuerpo, sin embargo, a diferencia de otras armas cuerpo a cuerpo, las armas de fuego se romperán si las usas repetidamente. De hecho aparece una barrita. A ver, estoy consciente de que esto no les guste a varios, o que se les haga raro. Pero recuerden que es un survival horror. Eso sí, hay varias armas cuerpo a cuerpo, y si buscas bien, encontrarás armas de fuego escondidas con cargador completo en el entorno. También tenemos una taser que puede usarse para aturdir temporalmente un objetivo. Esto causa un daño mínimo, pero permite apoderarse del arma del enemigo 
que queda aturdido o rematarlo. Sin embargo, después de cada uso, el taser debe recargarse antes de poder usarse nuevamente. De hecho, verás una pequeña barra que aparecerá. Obviamente, esto significa que no puedes usar como sustituto habitual de tus armas, así que cuidado y no te confíes. Otra cosa, existe el bloqueo. Es un componente esencial en la mecánica del juego ya que solamente puedes recibir unos pocos golpes cuerpo a cuerpo antes de morir. Un bloqueo exitoso desequilibra momentáneamente al enemigo, dándote la oportunidad de atacar o de realizar un movimiento final cuando un oponente está de rodillas, como un cabezazo, una rotura de cuello, un puñetazo o un golpe en la cabeza. Ah sí, también podemos utilizar una patada rápida que está disponible en todo momento. Si estás desarmado, si portas un arma de fuego vacía, créeme que es muy útil. A ver, el combate Puede que se sienta muy pesado para algunos y en general no te recomiendo ir a lo Call of Duty porque perderás rápidamente. Tienes que pensar en general cómo actuar ante las situaciones que el juego te está presentando. Créeme, es muy importante que un mal movimiento hará que termines rápidamente o si juegas bien tus cartas, incluso puedes pasarte el escenario sin siquiera haber sudado una sola gota. Tenemos también botiquines para curarnos que están repartidos en varios lugares, tampoco podemos llevar con nosotros así que dependes de lo que encuentres, así que estate al pendiente al iniciar un combate, ya que si no hay botiquines cerca y te quedas sin vida, tendrás que combatir con mucho cuidado, y eso créeme que es muy peligroso. Podemos correr, sin embargo tengo un problema con esto, y es que la estamina que tenemos se acaba muy rápido por lo que estarás constantemente caminando, por lo que también se tarda un poco recargarse por completo. De hecho esto me hizo recordar a un juego que años después saldría que es Evil Within, juegazo por cierto, pero sí se siente rarísimo. La otra mecánica principal del juego es la investigación forense de la escena del crimen. El juego utiliza un botón para esto, puedes recurrir a un conjunto de herramientas para buscar y registrar las pruebas. Cuando encuentras un área específica, el juego te alertará de la presencia de pruebas, al presionar el botón, las herramientas se desplegarán automáticamente detectando correctamente la necesaria para localizar la evidencia. Una vez que se haya localizado la evidencia, al presionar nuevamente el botón de herramientas se preparará automáticamente la herramienta de recolección necesaria. Una vez recopiladas, las pruebas se enviarán automáticamente al laboratorio para su análisis. Estas herramientas de detección son varias, como luz ultravioleta, una luz láser, un espectrómetro una cámara fotográfica especial, etc. Eso está muy interesante. Esos momentos, y por suerte hay varios, son increíbles. Y la verdad hace más que interesante el juego. Eso sí, puede que no te agrade que todo dependa de un botón, que lo hace muy automático. Pero en general, a mí me agradó mucho y se me hizo hasta cierto punto agradable de utilizar la mecánica y no pesada. Cosa que en otros juegos pues intentan agregar, pero a veces hace muy tosco el uso y hasta confuso, pero aquí no pasa. Ahora, quiero hablar del entorno y la ambientación. Mira, el juego se divide en capítulos. Estos son escenarios semiabiertos con puntos lineales, pero créeme que hay que explorarlos, e incluso te puedes perder porque no son tan pequeños como se ven algunos. Y de hecho, en algunos momentos hasta me sentí como si estuviera jugando un Resident Evil o Silent Hill, porque los entornos están degradados, abandonados, sucios, se sienten en general muy oscuros, a pesar de que si hay luz en algunos, esto hace que la ambientación en general se sienta perturbante, depresiva, estresante, solitario a pesar de que sabes que hay enemigos, pero eso mismo te genera una sensación constante de que te están observando y en varios momentos puedes ver cosas moviéndose a pesar de que no hay nadie e incluso observar cosas de reojo que cuando vuelves a ver no están, pero sabes que si sí pasó algo, sabes que observaste, que viste, juega mucho contigo eso, o sea, está increíble pero a la vez si sí te deja como con preocupación de que algo va a pasar. Obviamente todo esto combinado con los momentos paranormales, que le agregan momentos, créeme que muy inquietantes, hacen que este juego simplemente se siente increíble. A esto se le agrega los enemigos, los cuales de principio son viciosos, vagos, locos, y después se agregan unos que no estoy seguro si sean zombies, o alucinaciones, pero por su aspecto indica que ya no están vivos como tal, o dime tú a ti qué te parecen, pero todos estos nos atacarán con armas como tubos, palos, 
Obviamente las mismas armas que tú puedes agarrar, ellos las tomarán. E igual, como tú puedes tomar armas del entorno, ellos pueden tomar las armas igual. Algunos pocos portan armas de fuego. Eso sí, también para ellos aplica lo que mencioné sobre la munición limitada. Pero a veces hay uno que otro, pero son muy escasos, que pueden recargar las armas. Hasta cierto punto no está tan mal porque no crees que tampoco tienen munición infinita. Simplemente creo que pueden hacer una o dos recargas. Eso sí, aprovecha ¿eh? cuando veas que han recargado el arma completa. Ya que créeme que es muy útil tener el arma bien cargada. Eso sí, eso sí, estos enemigos no se quedarán en el lugar. Se estarán moviendo continuamente. O incluso después de combatir contra ti algunos, si no los terminaste de acabar, saldrá huyendo rápidamente. Estos no solo intentarán ocultarse, sino que incluso algunos te pueden sorprender. En ciertas esquinas o estarán moviéndose constantemente, intentando evadirte. Esto provoca que estés más al pendiente de las esquinas cuando abres una puerta, ya que créeme que no te van a tomar a la ligera, ¿eh? Algo curioso es que durante el juego, varios de ellos se pueden pelear entre ellos e incluso acabarse uno al otro. Es algo que está ahí y es curioso. Pero créeme que si lo sabes usar a tu favor, ganarás más fácil de lo que crees. A ver, también tenemos lo que quiero creer que son unos jefes. Aunque bueno, más que jefe creo que es... Pues que se termina siendo como una batalla normal, solo que aguanta un poquito más. Puede que no sea del agrado de muchos, pero ahí están, ahí están. Aunque son unas batallas ya tipo paranormales, no tan exageradas, de hecho simple es el mismo combate, pero... Eh, bueno, ya entenderán los que lo juegan. Se me hace raro explicarlo, pero ahí está. Y a ver, los personajes de este juego son pocos, pero están bien. Eso sí, los que sobresalen son Ethan, el protagonista y el antagonista del juego, Lilan. Créeme, es interesante. De hecho, la historia en general del juego, de principio a fin, te deja muy enganchado constantemente. Y eso sí me encantó. En el juego te van contando la historia, pero también te muestran un poquito de lo que está pasando con los antagonistas. Lo que hace que, por ejemplo, quieras saber qué está pasando. Y los escenarios encontrarás pistas muy importantes que créeme, lelas te ayudan demasiado a entender ciertas cosas. De una vez te digo, el juego sí es muy visceral. No se toma la manita para que te agrade, no. Te va a mostrar imágenes fuertes. Muy perturbadoras, momentos turbios. Si eres una persona que no te gusta este tipo de cosas, obviamente no te lo recomiendo. No es para blanditos. Más que nada esto sí está a otro nivel. Y algo que me ha encantado del juego y que pasa durante mucho tiempo es que a pesar de que en algunos puntos encontremos al asesino, siempre sentimos que estamos atrás de él. Que casi nunca llegamos, a pesar de que lo tengamos cerca, siempre tenemos esa sensación de quedarnos atrás. Está muy bien, la verdad. En otros juegos simplemente desaparecería y ya está. Pero aquí no, porque cuando lo encontramos, entramos en una persecución. Y una persecución interesante, porque nos va cerrando lugares y nosotros tenemos que ver cómo llegar a él. Incluso vemos cómo él se enfrenta a otros enemigos. Y eso está increíble, la verdad. Algo que tengo con este juego, no en mal sentido, sino algo que sí me molestó mucho. Es el simple hecho de que está muy dejado, casi olvidado ya hoy en día. Y eso que al principio, es cuando salió este juego y lo recuerdo bien, mucha gente aclamó por él. De hecho este juego no tiene casi críticas negativas como tal. Al contrario, casi todas son muy positivas, pero lamentablemente ha sido abandonado, dejado al olvido. Hay un segundo juego y una precuela de este juego y por ahí dicen que se quería hacer una película, pero pues nunca se hizo. Pero bueno, ya han pasado varios años de este juego y es una lástima ni siquiera ver indicios de una continuación, algo, nada, o sea, se me hace muy triste la verdad. Pero para mí fue un gusto traérselos, créeme que incluso jugarlo otra vez me ha traído buenos recuerdos. Como vuelvo y les repito, el juego no es para cualquier persona, así que con precaución por favor. Y eso ha sido todo de mi parte esta semana, yo espero que les haya gustado, dejen sus comentarios ahí abajo, denle like, suscríbanse, compartan... Que créeme que como ayuda mucho este canal. Les mando un gran saludo a todos, a mis suscriptores, a los que me ven. Yo soy Sarnath. Hasta luego.